Formlab sent me their Form 4 3D printer, which has got me thinking about bronze casting of all things. This printer is able to produce really precise objects repeatedly, quickly. Look at these two Mobius strips. They're walked at 90 degrees and somehow still able to move independently. That level of precision is what we're talking about. And the bronze connection comes from my idea of pulling a heist on a museum. This is the stuff I get really, really, really excited about. These are molds. This is a uh, socketed bronze axe head seen in the Ashmolean Museum. And evidently we're not the only ones who have run into this problem. Leaving a hole in the casting. I really like to get hands-on with history, which is why I took a bronze casting workshop with Will Lord, where we learned about the lost wax casting technique, as well as the sand molds that were more common much later in history. Here I'm making a socketed bronze axe out of wax. Now, you might be thinking, Joseph, wax is not bronze. How are you going to cut down a tree with that? Well, the idea is to take molten bronze and use it into a clay mold that used to hold the wax model. The wax model has been burned out, and that makes a single-use mold. And you can get some amazingly detailed casts this way, including axes or brooches. But the trouble is, since it's a single-use mold, if anything goes wrong, it's over. Now, if you go to museums, not only do they have the physical artifacts, frequently they have taken 3D scans and posted them for free online. Here on Sketchfab, you can manipulate this Paul Stave axe in all directions and see what it looks like and kind of be there with it, you know, with a screen and a mouse. Not in your hands, you can't exactly take this thing home. It's, it's just there and theirs. But if you scroll down a little bit, you'll notice a license. This is a Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike license, which means it is legal to download this and print your own. I have some experience with fused deposition modeling FDM printers. This is the robot army. This is from back when I ran a 3D print farm out of my basement. The way these work is basically like a hot glue gun. They have to trace out the entire area for every single print that you make. However, this printer from Formlabs is an SLA printer. The way it works is it has an LCD screen at the bottom that cures a UV sensitive resin. But what that means is that you can print a whole bunch of pieces or just one piece in the exact same amount of time. There is no difference between them because an entire layer cures all at once. You can print a whole chest set or just one piece and it doesn't affect the time. And in either case, it's blazing fast. One of the most impressive value propositions that Formlabs brings is in their suite of materials. They have materials that are optimized for dentistry, for jewelry making. They sent me some optically clear resin that you can even make lenses out of. Well, at Open Source, I got to see some true silicone resin if you want to make parts that have high heat resistance, high chemical resistance, that are flexible like rubber. And they just barely released a new resin called ClearCast. And this stuff I'm really excited about because you can use it for lost wax casting with large prints, which means I can suddenly make things like Bronze Age axes using a 3D printer. Remember that problem about lost wax casts? They're super high detailed and they work really well, unless they don't. And if the mold breaks, you not only have to make the mold again, you have to carve your wax master again. With a 3D print, you can unlock being able to repeat it as many times as you want, or even being able to mass produce lost wax casted items. So with the printer in hand, with lost wax casting on the brain, what is my first <laughs> cast going to be? Obviously it has to be a bronze sword. I actually made a bronze sword as part of the casting workshop with Will Lord. However, I don't have it anymore. I actually sent it as a gift to Lindy Beige after we filmed a series of videos near Hadrian's Wall. Thank you, you have done humanity a service. Which means I need another one. Need might be a little strong, but it's a bronze sword. It's awesome. The build area of the Form 4 is quite large. It's not bronze sword large, but it's certainly bronze dagger large. I found this really interesting looking dagger from the John Hunt Museum, which was uh, affectionately called a letter opener. And the model looks really good for casting. Unfortunately, when an item is 3D scanned, you sometimes get weird artifacts. Sometimes there are walls that don't show up properly. And sometimes you see things like this label, which are going to stick out in the final print and also in the cast. Preform, which is Formlabs' custom slicer software, allows you to not fill in the inside of a model. You can just print the perimeter, create a shell, and then save that resin. This is specifically intended, as I understand it, for wasp wax casting like this. Oh, it turned out so good! Wow. 
The next problem to solve is figuring out how to turn this into bronze. Formlabs sent me a lot of tools, but one of the things they did not send me was a kiln or the investment material. And I kind of want to try doing this part primitively. I now have the opportunity to have the wax part repeatable, so I can play a little bit with using primitive methods and see if I can get it to work. While with Will Lord, we learned about using just raw clay as an investment material, and we got some mixed success. Some of it worked pretty well. Wow, okay, so it preserved a lot of the braid, it looks like. So that's what I'm going to attempt here, or at least what I attempted at first. I later switched it to Plaster of Paris because, unfortunately, my clay started cracking. I need to get the mixture dialed in just right. The pieces have been glued in with hot glue into this plastic tub. And now we're going to add the plaster and sand mix. have a burnout oven, but I do have an old burnt out oven. So what I'm going to do is set this upside down on a couple of bricks. And then I'm going to set a couple of bricks on the side to rest that guy on. I'm going to set up a uh, oil lamp, this is bacon grease, to create some heat and hopefully get this thing cooking. Four hours later and it is still burning. However, I don't think that one little lamp is making this a hot oven. There we have our candle. And here we have our still very damp mold. Okay, let's see about this. Trying again, elevated the brick. And now I've got the fire with some charcoal and hopefully the flame will start over there, move underneath and get this thing ready for firing. I'm doing what I probably should have done, which is use my forge to clean out that mold. And I've got this bizarrely white flame coming off the top. Whatever is in that resin is burning white. On screen it looks mostly blue, but in the center right here what I'm seeing is blue flame around the outside edge, but that part coming right off the mold is bright ghostly white. Looks really cool. Oh, now you can see it a little bit. I've just turned the forge as low as it'll go in a hope that I'm not going to spall that mold out too badly. Yeah. That broke. Yep. What, did, what happened? It's cold. Yep. Well, what are we grilling today? That's right, plaster molds. Hi, cat. This should be a lot gentler than throwing them in the forge was. I am slowly bringing them up to temperature. Metal burner is not going. Started with the flame on this end. After raising temperature a little bit, started the flame on this end. The entire idea here is slow escalation until eventually we burn away all the plastic that is inside the mold. Yes, yes, you're very cute. I mixed up some bronze using the recipe of 90% copper, 10% tin. If you buy lead-free solder, it's essentially just tin, so that's what I used for the 10%. And the copper is bars that I previously melted down from old electrical components. It has far up! Ah, that's scary! You may be tempted to ask here, is Joseph wearing Crocs while casting? And the answer is yes. In this particular cast, nothing bad happened, but a little later in the day, that did come back to bite me. It wasn't actually molten metal that got in my shoe, it was a bit of spalting. When you pour molten metal onto concrete, no matter how dry the concrete is, it contains chemically bonded water that can flash to steam. If that happens, there's a little pop, and suddenly a little piece of either very hot concrete or very hot metal will end up flying, and if Murphy is watching, it will get in the holes of your croc. So, Safety precautions, better perimeter, just don't do what I did. I got lucky, that doesn't mean you can be stupid.
might need some more. Dad, where are some more metal? We can, where are some more bronze? Well, that's about all I've got. That's all the bronze that you've got? Mm-hmm. Can you make some more? Maybe later, but not right now. Is that bronze? It is. Should I bring it up again? Try again. Dad, are you making more some bronze? Are you getting bronze and putting them in? Yep, I'm getting some nuggets of bronze to put back in. And I'm going to try again? one more time to fill that hole. Okay, so this is not quite what I had in mind, but it's not a failure. Wow. On the whole, I'm reasonably pleased with this result. The thing with lost wax casting is there's a lot to dial in. I need to figure out how to get the burnout process to work much, much better. I have a friend who might be willing to give me a kiln in the not too distant future, so hopefully that can improve. And also, I am going to be trying this again. This is just too cool to pass up. I'm looking forward to making and testing out artifacts, including these Roman dodecahedrons and more axes and more fun stuff. If you enjoyed this project and kind of like the zany fusion of old tech and new tech with musings along the way, please hit the like button and subscribe and come back for more. Till next time, thank you for watching.